Welcome back for another special session of ReLead today. I've got my pal, my coach, my friend, and mentor, Matthew Sutter, with me today. Matt is going to be playing the real estate agent in this uh, recruiting presentation session. So uh, for those of you that are new to ReLead, uh, we've been doing this each and every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we have covered everything a lead agent and or broker owner needs to know about successfully running a business. And so I say lead agent and or broker owner because there are a lot of similarities between the two. And it's something I know Matt talks about quite a bit in his business mastery program. Uh, but once you decide, once you make the decision to go from salesperson to business person, you're no longer just a salesperson leading a team. You're, you're, you're a business person leading a business. So many, much of what we talk about in ReLead, lead, even though the title is Lead Agent Training Program, uh, it applies to broker owners. In fact, we know the majority of our audience is broker, owner, managers, team leaders, and so forth. So uh, we are on session 12 of 18, and we are actually on what I would call, I guess, subsection uh, number four of, of the recruiting discussion. We covered the best tactics around recruiting. Uh, we then got into the best scripts around recruiting. And by the way, if you haven't gotten your Glover U recruiting script book, make sure, don't do it right now, do it after this session, just jot it down, email us at info at gloveru.com. We won't be able to get it out to you right this second. You'll get it after the session. But if you want our entire script book from start to finish, meaning the lead generation, the lead follow-up, the presentation, the objection handlers, email us at info, I-N-F-O, at gloveru.com, and we will make sure that we get those out to you. A couple other housekeeping items, because I know we have a lot of first-timers on. I know a lot of you wanted to make sure you saw a live recruiting presentation, which we're going to get into in just a second. If you're not already, make sure you are in the Glover U inner circle. I know most of you are, but if you're new to ReLead, make sure you're in the Glover U inner circle. It's free to join. If you got your phone, just take out your phone right now, click on your Facebook app and type in Glover U inner circle. Free to join, just click join and we'll let you in there sometime later today. That's the Glover U inner circle on Facebook. Why do I bring that up? because that is the one place where we funnel all of the information that we put out to the public, all of the information about the best listing strategies, the best sales strategies, the best recruiting strategies, the best team building strategies, they all go there first. And we were actually, we just finished up a coach's call before this. We've received a lot of nice compliments from our clients over the last few weeks. Uh, one came in this morning, I'm not gonna read it to you, but basically in a nutshell, we're having a lot of people tell us, hey, I appreciate the material and the content you guys are putting out because it's very relevant to what's happening right now. It's very real because we are the only coaching company where the head coach is on the ground listing and selling real estate with you, uh, but it's very real information. A lot of programs out there are preaching information that was good two months ago, good a month ago, but not anymore. So know that we're always going to bring you the freshest, latest, and greatest information and content that you need. All right. So uh, before we get in today's session, each and every week, we have a giveaway for those that use the hashtag GloverU and hashtag ReLead. Every week we, we ask for people to, oh, we are out of uh, I'm just getting a message. All right. We don't have uh, material. So we've got some more material on order so we can continue with the giveaway. So uh, we will circle back on that. But what happens is each and every week, for those of you that chime into ReLead, you share a quote, you take a selfie, you know, you take a picture of a screen, a screen grab, screen, whatever, and you share it to Facebook. Um, I'm getting a note here that we're going to have it at the end of the call. Okay, cool. So we're going to do that at the end of the call. I will make a note of that. But every time you put a quote out there, every time you put some information out there, something that you learn during ReLead, we go scour social media, particularly Facebook and Instagram, and find people talking about ReLead. So we just search the hashtag ReLead and hashtag GloverU, and we choose one lucky winner each and every week. Okay, so let's dive into the today's session. Now, today's going to be a little bit of a longer one because we're going to do two recruiting presentations in one. Now I have shortened what would be the longer one, that's recruiting presentation or recruiting appointment number one for the sake of time, but we're gonna get into recruiting presentation number two 
as well as objection handlers, and you'll see how I close Matt to join our company. So Matt, if you're on and you can hear me, uh, uh, just tell us, you know, 30 seconds or less, a little bit about yourself for those that are joining us for the first time. Yeah, Jeff, so it's awesome to be uh, with you. Uh, I'm one of the staff coaches with Glover U, specializing primarily in business development and leadership development. So, of course, I teach a 24-week business mastery class, which we say is like an MBA, like it's in a college MBA level uh, training program for people that really want to become effective leaders and business people. And you're speaking my love language today because we're going to go into recruiting, which is the lifeblood of any successful business. And we're going to show exactly how you do it. How do you, you, how do you recruit top talent and then attract them and bring them into your company? That's right. Well, and I appreciate you being on and I pre pre appreciate you playing the role, the role of real estate agent today, Matt. Okay. Ready to go. So, so let's jump in again. We've got appointment number one and then we'll have appointment number two. You'll see the close and everything take place at the end. Appointment number one, before I get into the script, please note that it has been shortened for the sake of time. Appointment number one normally alone would take probably 30 to 45 minutes and I'm going to condense it down to about 15. Uh, so that means I'm going to leave a lot of questions off. Now, if you're wondering, where do I get these questions? Again, you have a script book. Hopefully, if you don't, you email us at info at whoeveryou.com. All right, Matt, so let's take it away. Hey, I appreciate you taking the time to get together from your busy schedule. I know you've got a lot going on. And Matt, just so you know, my goal by the end of our meeting today is to find out how I can help you grow your business and or get more time back in your life, whether you join our company or not. I know a lot of people think, oh, I'm sitting in this chair or I'm sitting across from Jeff drinking a coffee. He's going to try to recruit me. My goal is to give you some good information that you can apply whether you stay at your company or you join us now or join us down the road. Fair enough? Yeah, sounds fair. Perfect. So the first step to figuring out a plan for you, Matt, and offering some ideas is I first need to learn just a little bit about your business. After I learn about your business, I'm going to collect my thoughts and share these strategies with you during meeting number two. Fair enough? Okay, sounds good. So, the, so there will be a second meeting because I'm not able, unfortunately, to give you, any, give you all the solutions right here on the spot. I need to learn about you first, about your business, the way you you prefer to conduct business, and then I'll come back to you with some ideas and strategies that you can apply to your business uh, right at your current brokerage. Cool? Sounds good. All right. So, and just so you know, Matt, everything that we talk about is going to be kept confidential. You know, I'm not sharing that you're meeting with me or any of that. I'm here to help you out. And I promise you, the more you share with me, the stronger the plan I can put together for you. Sound good? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. And you don't mind if I take notes, do you? No, no. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's just start off with some basics. And forgive me, the first few questions I have are probably a little redundant because you're like, Jeff, you should know this stuff. But I like starting with the basics and then I'll get into the meaty stuff, okay? Okay, cool. Cool. So question number one I have for you, Matt, is how long have you been in the business? I've uh, been in the business for about seven years. Seven years? Okay, great. So you've, you've seen mostly the, good, the strong market then, right? Yep, yep. Yep. And prior to business, prior to real estate, what did you do? I was actually a high school math, uh, a math teacher. Really? A high school math teacher. All right. Well, yeah. you can probably figure out 3% and 6% pretty easily then, right? Yeah, I can do that all day long. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. So why did you get into real estate? I really just wanted the ability to make more money. I just wasn't able to live the life I wanted to on a, on a high school teacher salary. Um, uh, plus, I, I like I the idea of being able to kind of make my own schedule. Um, and yeah. I felt like real estate could offer me that. Yep. Perfect. So uh, obviously in, 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 in education, you're, you're limited at the, the, the max money you can make. And of course, you're told where to be and when, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So just out of curiosity, do you know any of our current agents? And if you do, who do you know? Yeah, I actually know Kate Simon. And okay. uh, she was kind of the kind of the reason I, I took this meeting because she's always talking about how great it is. And so yeah, I, yeah, I think I think highly of her. Well, Kate, Kate was our, our rookie of the year in her first year with us. She was one of our first inside sales associates, and um, she's rocking and rolling, that's for sure. So yeah. shifting gears a little bit, Matt, um, what do you see as your biggest challenge in the market today? Well, I mean, gosh, with COVID coming around, um, I'm really nervous. Um, my listing inventory has gone down to almost zero, and I'm not sure where this is all going to go. Yeah, yeah, no, we're definitely seeing, I, I'm sure you may have seen the, the April stats that came out that showed listing inventory was down 50% in April. So 
I'm with you. You know, it's something that we're paying attention to as well. And uh, in your mind, have you given any thought to how you're going to deal with the low inventory or deal with those challenges? I mean, part of the reason I took the meeting is, is just I'm willing to learn as much as I can about any of the new ways to do business. I'm taking advantage of anything I can find. Yep. Yep. And that's fair. Yep. Yep. I, I'm, <laughs> trust me when I tell you, I'm probably, I'm zoomed out by now because we've been paying attention to so much out there, right? Like we're done with the zooms. We're ready to get to work, right? Yeah. Good. So talk to me about your current office environment. One of the ways that I help agents succeed at their own, in their own brokerages and at their current companies is understanding their current office environment a little bit better. So tell me what you like most about your current office environment. Well, I mean, I like that they keep to my, that they let me keep to myself. Um, they kind of just leave me alone and let me do, do my thing, which is, is yeah. again, why I got into real estate. I wanted some autonomy. Yeah. Nope. That's nice. Not having someone breathing down, breathing down your neck. Right. Yeah. And what would you say you like least about your current office environment? Um, I, mean, I think least it's, it's a, it's a total ghost town. So it's really, it lacks energy. So sometimes it's hard to feed off anything else. Yeah. Yeah, that's an, I hear that often, you know, a lot of agents say, you know, you could drop a pin in my office and you would be able to hear it <laughs> because of how quiet it is. Understood. Yeah, that's ours. Understood. Yeah. Well, hey, you're not alone. That, I hear that a lot. And now, Matt, if you could create the perfect office environment in your mind, what would that look like? Well, I mean, I'd love to, I'd love to be in an environment that's fast paced, it's structured, it's, it's, it's high energy, something I can feed off of. Yeah. And that, that would probably help you do a little bit more production, I would imagine. I would think so. Yeah. Okay. Cause that energy is kind of contagious, isn't it? A big time. At least, at least it is for me. I like to feed off yeah. it for sure. Good. Let's talk about the numbers a little bit uh, about how much money did you make last year? Uh, last year I made around 140,000. Okay. All right. And what about this year? What are you on track to make this year? I mean, it's scary. Um, I'm not even on track to make a hundred thousand with everything going on. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, again, you're not alone. I mean, we're hearing that from, from different agents, from different brokerages. I mean, obviously taking six or eight weeks off on business is, is definitely going to impact you at the end of the year. That's for sure. So, uh, 140 last year, by the way, congratulations. That That's great numbers. Uh, how long would, just out of curiosity, how long would it have taken you to make that, make that money in education? <laughs> uh, five, six, seven years. <laughs> yeah, I bet <laughs> at least. So, all right, good. So, um, when you look at the 140 last year, how many units uh, was that? And what was, uh, what was um, your, your net? Yeah, off the top of my head, um, that was about 20 units. And, uh -huh. and that 140 I was talking about, that was, that was the commissions I earned. That was the commissions ah, I earned. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So then what was your taxable income in 2019? Uh, off the top of my head, I think it was right around 70, 70,000. Okay, great. So commissions earned, meaning your 1099 from your brokerage said 140,000 thereabouts. And when you did your taxes, your taxable income was around 70K. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. And by the way, I know obviously we're on a Zoom given the times today, but I, I'm taking notes even if you can't see me here. Um, so, so let me ask you a question. Um, I know 140 was where you're at. You're, you're hoping to get at least back to that level because you're a little off track right now. Where do you want to take your business? I mean, I want to keep growing. So um, I really want to get to, I'm actually netting 150 K, um, but I don't want to have to work 80 hours a week to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Right. Like everyone's like, Oh, I'd love to have that. But then they look at what they need to do to get it. And it's like, uh, is it worth it? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's right. 150. What's, what's significant about that 150 number? How did you arrive at that? <laughs> well, you know, part of the reason I jumped into real estate was into real estate was to make more money because I've got two kids going into college and uh, that's not going, that's not getting any cheaper. Um, uh, but I also, you know, I also really want to be able to have more time. So I don't want to work 80 hours a week, like I said, because I want to be able to spend time with, uh, with family and friends. Yeah, that's reasonable. So in a perfect world, you know, your, your, your taxable income, if you will, is, is, is 150 and you're spending more time with family and friends. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Perfect. I'm just making a note of that. And uh, Matt, how do you see yourself getting there? Right. Obviously you just, I asked you the question, you gave me the answer. So you've had to have given us a little bit of thought prior to meeting with me. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the things I've been focused on is I'm, I'm kind of using a, a CRM, but I really need to like master a CRM. Something's going to help me uh, grow my business and really help me focus on becoming a better listing agent. Yep. 
Got it. So, so get better at, at a CRM, which you hear uh, every day of the week. Somebody's got a new technique for a CRM or, a, or an awesome CRM. Uh, and, and of course, being a better listing agent. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, big time. Okay, good. Now, Matt, question. Will you have to change the manner in which you do business to achieve your goal? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Um, I'm kind of at that point and, I, and I'm nervous because of COVID, but, you know, before this year, I, re I recognize I'm probably at the point where I need to hire an assistant um, mm -hmm. so that I can really focus on uh, on building my listing inventory, building my seller business. Um, and then the other thing that's been on my mind is uh, is looking into hiring a coach. Got it. Got it. Okay. And we, we hear that often. So hiring assistant definitely give you maybe a little bit more time back and, and maybe can help you do more deals. And of course, hiring a coach is obviously, you know, coaches have been around the industry for, for 20 plus years and we know that that's proven, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So question, what type of activities uh, or technologies do you think you're going to have to embrace to get this 150 net number? Well, I definitely have to figure out a better CRM program. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of like I said, I, I think I need to master that. I think I'm missing a lot yeah. of opportunities because of that. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, I really need to get better at um, creating a, a seller-focused marketing plan. That's kind of on my radar right now. Got it. So you're like a lot of agents, by the way, Matt. You, you're, you're good at probably generating leads. You're, you're, you're a great salesperson. You, you care about people. You care about helping them uh, get to the next, get, you know, get from one house to the next. Um, but keeping things organized and, and in, a, in a systematic way sounds like something you may struggle with. Is that right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Which, uh, by the way, again, I hear that all the time, so you're not alone. So what technology, what technology are you currently using? I mean, really, the only things I'm using are dot loop. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of using the Zillow uh, CRM, although, you yeah. know, it's, it's obviously limited in what it can do, like yeah. I said, and then uh, I show, showing time. I'm using showing time. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I know Zillow provides a, a pretty basic CRM, but if you use it properly, I'm, I'm sure you can have uh, some results with it. And do you have an, a, do you, you, you don't have an assistant now, right? No, but I, I, if I felt confident in where the market was going, I, it's definitely something I want to get. Yeah. Okay. And, but I'm sure your office provides some level of admin or, or operations. Uh, do they? Yeah, I mean, we have, a, we have a front desk person who's uh, really nice, and, and she always inputs our listings and, and sales. And then um, we've, got, we've got kind of a marketing person on site, and they'll order my signs and then, you know, upload things to Zillow and things like that. Okay, that's fair. Sounds, sounds like they're taking some things off your hand, which I know that that's important to you. And uh, Matt, do you, do you farm a particular area? Like, do you work a geographic farm or go after business in a particular zone? No, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's been the other thing that has kind of been on my mind is I know if I'm going to get really good at listings, I've got to, I've got to find a target area. Got it. Got it. So farming is, is something on the list. Perfect. Uh, last question I have for you. Uh, and, and again, this is, by the way, Matt, this has been very helpful. Uh, uh, I can't wait to go back and digest my notes and, and help you put a plan together. Talk to me about your past clients, your sphere of influence. Are you marketing to them? How do you add value to them? Yeah, I mean, this is part of why I know I need to get really good at a CRM. I mean, right now, all I'm doing is uh, I mail to them quarterly, um, and then I try to call at least uh, at least all of them once a year. Um, I looked for a while at doing client events, but to be honest, it just looked like a lot of work. Yeah, you know, obviously putting together the venue and organizing things and getting people to show up. I mean, it'd be nice if you could just walk in and it's all done for you, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, we would like that too. So good. No, this has been, this has been super help, helpful, Matt. And I've really enjoyed, honestly, the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better and find out what's important to you and your business. Now know that I've taken some, some good notes here and I'd like to review my notes and formulate a few business strategies for you, if that's okay. Uh, I've got a couple of great ideas and I'm, I'm going to share them with you, but I really need to go back and formulate a plan because I don't want to just go willy nilly on you. You should do this. You should do this. You should do this. I really want to help you put it in a systematic orderly way. So that way you're doing things at the right moments in time. And of course, making sure there are things that you could also accomplish at your current brokerage. So I need maybe a day or so to put this plan together. So is it possible we could get together tomorrow, maybe in the afternoon around three o'clock or perhaps Friday at 3.30? I mean, maybe I, I'm kind of busy. Um, I mean, can't you just, can't you just share with me now? I've got some time. 
Yeah, no, I know. And, and trust me when I tell you, I, I value your time. I know, uh, you know, with, with, with you being deemed essential, able to list and sell real estate again, uh, I'd imagine that there's tons of buyers and sellers that are talking to you about wanting to get their homes on the market. And if you would just give me maybe 30, 45 more minutes of your time tomorrow or Friday, I promise you, I'll share with you a plan that you can take back and implement right away. Fair enough? Uh, yeah. Okay. That's fine. We can do that. Perfect. So I'll put you down for tomorrow at three o'clock. Okay. Okay, good. So we're going to stop the role play here for a second. So that was appointment number one. Now, mind you, if you were following along with the script, there's a total of like 28 questions. I only actually asked maybe 12 or 15. Uh, in a normal setting, I want to get every single question out there because he's going to give me ammo that I could use later when I come back for meeting number two. Matt, do you have anything that you want to add to what, what you experienced there or what just took place? Yeah, and fantastic. And obviously, we're doing this kind of in an inorganic setting. And that's just that's just the reality of role play. You know, one of the things we teach in the business mastery class around recruiting is, is Jeff, you're going through the script. However, if this is a real dialogue, you may be inserting follow up questions that would help inflict pain. Yeah. Like, like you would key on a, a pain point for me when I say that I've got a gap in my business, you say, you say something like, well, does that concern you? Or um, does your current environment provide the infrastructure to be able to solve that issue? Yep. Now, you're not going to actually solve it in that time. You're just trying to create pain, Jeff, so that when you go to close for the second appointment, you actually have that person begging you for the answer. Yeah. And we know we've done this really well when that person goes home at night and they can't sleep yep. because they have a sense you have the solution that they don't know and they're desperate for it. Yep. Love that. Love that. And uh, thank you for, for sharing that, Matt. And for those of you that are following along with us, um, during the next portion of the interview, I'm going to deliver a lot of different kind of one-liners and scripts. Um, because I'm talking rather quickly, if you, if you could put them into the group chat, so that way we get them in writing, so that way you can see it for later and write it down later, it'll help everyone else. It'll help yourself. Uh, that would be super helpful. Just know that uh, because of the mode that we're on, you have to make sure you're clicking uh, that it broadcasts to panelists and attendees. All right. So uh, when you're when you're put, commenting in the chat, make sure you're checking panelists and attendees so we can see that. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into appointment number two. All right. So Matt, first of all, I appreciate you taking the time to meet with me again. I know it's super busy being that you've been allowed to go back to work again. And um, if it's all right with you, I've actually came up with six different plans, six different ideas that you can go back and implement your business, some of them right away, and some of them maybe later this year or when you put together your 2021 business plan. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm excited. Now, Matt, when I walk you through this plan, I'd like for you to take notes if that's okay. So I've actually brought along a yellow pad. Here you go. Okay. And I'm handing, I'm handing you a yellow pad. And I'd like you now, of course, if they show up with their laptop, then, you know, if, if you've got a laptop there, take notes on your laptop or your iPad or whatever. So I'd like you to take notes if that's okay while I walk you through these six. And my hope is, is that by the end of this meeting, You'll be able to look at this and say, yep, it's time to get to work. And thank you for your time, Jeff. And maybe we'll do business now or maybe we'll do business later. Fair enough? Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, good. So the first one I wrote down, if, if you would follow along with me and take a note on this, Matt, the first thing I wrote down was coaching and accountability. Coaching and accountability. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was, you know, your environment, what you love about it, what you don't like about it, what you'd like to see differently. And one of the things that, that, I sure you can agree with is that if you had someone holding you a little bit more accountable and if you had someone uh, coaching you along the way, um, whether they're in your office or you have to actually go out and hire a coach, that's probably going to help you hit your goals. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, right now, like I, like I said a couple of days ago, it's a ghost town in there. So I don't really have, I don't have anybody to really play off or talk through. Yep. Yep. Now let me ask you, Matt, are you familiar with JoLynn Mercita in our office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I definitely know who she is. So Jolyn joined us from ReFirst Real Estate um, several years ago. And one of the biggest things for Jolyn was similar to what you said, having an environment where it's very coaching friendly and there's a higher level of accountability, which leads to a little bit of structure. Now, one thing I can tell you about Jolyn is that since joining us and since she has, when I look at all the values that we offer that she's taken advantage of, 
the coaching and accountability piece, she never misses a one-on-one -on -one session. She never misses a 7.30 call. She never misses a meeting. Her level of, of participation with coaching and accountability has been tremendous in her success. I don't know if you know this or not, Matt, but JoLynn closed over 40 transactions last year, and she attributes a lot of that to coaching and accountability. Now, based on that, do you think that adding coaching and accountability to your business would add value to it? I mean, it would only have to. I mean, I one of the things I've been clear on, especially with with COVID, is is my activities have gone down dramatically, and I, I just feel like I'm not getting as much done as I should. So, just even any accountability would would be helpful. Yeah. So how? So if you did have a coach and you did have accountability, how do you see yourself benefiting from it? Uh, I think I just get more of the key activities done. I get my lead generation uh, done more consistently. I do my follow up. Um, I'd love to have somebody that, you know, was kind of on my back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And not, not too overly, right. Because you don't want to be like what it was when you were teaching, but, but someone checking in on you regularly, asking you how you're doing with your goals, right? Yeah, that would be great. So let me ask you a question. If, if, if you went out and hired a coach and let's pretend it didn't cost you anything, um, conservatively, right. You did 20 transactions last year, conservatively, how many transactions do you think you'd be able to add to your business? Uh, this year, if you had a coach and an environment that was holding you accountable, even if you had to create the environment yourself. I mean, gosh, it, it's got to be at least six. Six or so. Yeah. Conservatively, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So do me a favor. Go ahead. I know you already wrote down coaching and accountability. Uh, go ahead and write the number six next to that. All right. I really, when okay. we're done with this, I really want to think about a realistic number that we could get you to if you really truly plugged into these things. Okay. So the next thing I have written down in my notes that I want to share with you is a monthly postcard to your farm. Okay. A monthly postcard to your farm. So just go ahead and write down monthly postcard to my farm. Now it sounds like this is something you wanted to do. Maybe you put it off uh, and, and you either you haven't had the time or the money or whatever, just something you haven't gotten to, right? Uh, yeah, well, part of it's the, the, the accountability. <laughs> Just yeah, going done. back to number one, sure. Well, let me yeah. ask you, Matt, are you familiar with David Benernagel from our office? Uh, no, I don't think I know him. Okay. So Dave Benernagel joined us from a company called Real Estate 2. And one of the big things that Dave's taken advantage of, of our company with has been our postcard mailing program. Uh, we have a program where basically we handle all of the administration, we handle all of the marketing, all of the design, and we just split the cost of, of the postage. Now, let me ask you a question. If you had a monthly postcard going out, it was automated, you didn't have to put a lot of energy, you didn't have to put a lot of thought into that, would that have any value to you? Wow, that would be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So how would, you, how would your business benefit from it in your mind? Um, I mean, I'm sure I would sell at least a couple uh, transactions a year just from that. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is that, that's not something you're doing now, but it's something that you could probably hire someone to do, whether you're with our, you know, if you're not with our company, all of these things I'm giving you, you can go out and get right. So that's either something you're going to have to do yourself, which means going back to point number one, scheduling time for it, uh, or hiring it out. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, what, that's part of why I wanted to hire an assistant. So, so I could finally get it done. Understood. So conservatively, if you mailed to your neighborhood, um, say once a month for the next 12 months, honestly and conservatively, how many transactions do you think would come out of that? Well, I mean, I know farming takes a while before you, you see the real upside, but I would still yeah. think in the first year I could sell a couple homes from it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and write down monthly postcard farming and the number two next to that, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Now, the third thing I wanted to talk to you about, have you, are you familiar with the showing agent model? No, I don't know what that is. So one of the things I heard over and over and over again is that you want to become a better listing agent. And of course, mm -hmm. as you know, in order to become a better listing agent, it means you probably are going to have to do less buyer transactions. Would you agree with that? Yeah, ideally. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you had somebody showing homes for you, right? Uh, yeah. 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 So you could utilize a showing agent model, not show any houses, you know, granted you're giving up some of your commission to do that, but it allows you to go out and take more listings. Uh, Matt, let me ask you, are you familiar with Anthony Bertrand from our office in Birmingham? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know that name. Sure. Yeah. yeah. He's been with us a little while. He joined us from a company called Kevin Willard and Anthony, his greatest strength, Matt, is listing property. 
uh, his greatest weakness is working with buyers. So what Anthony found is by working with showing agents, he actually increased his average buyer transactions per year from 12. He was averaging about 12 a year before he joined us, Matt. So now he's doing over 20 buyer transactions a year without showing a single house. Can you believe that? That's hard to believe. That's amazing. And this is someone that doesn't like buyers, but he increased his buyer business by not showing any houses. So let me ask you, how do you see yourself benefiting from a showing agent model if you could implement one? I mean, I, it's hard to even imagine not having to put people in my car. It's by far the, the thing that's taken the most time in my business and it's the thing I enjoy the least. Um, it would be, be life-changing for me yeah. to be able to build my listing business with all that extra time. Sure. And of course, we're not going to solve it in this meeting, but you know, you and I can talk about the, the compensation model and what that looks like. So that way you have a better idea of what your net will be. But conservatively, based on what I shared with you, if you never had to show a house again and you were mm -hmm. able to increase your buyer business and your listing business, conservatively, how many more deals do you think you could do in a year if you never had to show a house again? I mean, if I, I can't even imagine with all the time I'd get back, if I really didn't have to show houses, um, gosh, I'd definitely sell 10 more homes because of it. Ten definitely. Homes. Now that's taking yeah. into consideration. You still working with buyers. You're just not showing any homes. And now you're a listing agent. You're taking more listings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. So go ahead and write down next to showing agent model. Go ahead and write down the number 10 for me, please. Okay. Now, Let's go to my next one, number four. Um, Matt, you shared with me over and over, if I could just master the CRM, if I could just master the CRM, if I could just master the CRM. Um, are you familiar with the CRM we use in our company? No. Now, although it's exclusive to our firm, there are other CRMs out there that you could get that would probably have similar or close to results. It's not going to be exact, but I could probably recommend two or three CRMs that cost you a few thousand bucks a month that will get you similar results. And I think having a strong CRM in 2020 and beyond is going to be important in your business. Would you agree with that, Matt? Yeah, definitely. I know I need it. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, are you familiar with Linda Schwartz in our company? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So Linda joined us from Express Realty. And one of the things that, that was a big sticking point from her was having to pay for a CRM. So not only was she using a CRM that was just kind of average, but she also had to pay for it. Now in Linda's first year with us, and she attributes most of this to the CRM because she loves our CRM. In her first year with us, she put an additional eight buyers and sellers under contract just by utilizing our CRM every single day. Now, if you had a CRM that worked with you for you and was beneficial to your business, would that be valuable to you? Uh, yeah, I know I'm, I know I'm losing people that are falling through the cracks yeah. uh, because I'm not following up with them. I know for sure. It's, it's the number one challenge with salespeople. You're a great salesperson and disorganized, right? And those that are yeah, super yeah. organized, generally speaking, struggle with their sales skills. And of course, we help people with that as well. So if you had the best CRM on the market uh, and you didn't have to pay for it, now granted, you might have to go out and get one. Uh, but if you had the best CRM on the market, conservatively, based on what you know, the example I just shared and people you've been talking to, conservatively, how many more deals could you add this year if you'd utilize the CRM in your business every single day? I mean, conservatively, at, at, at least six. At least six. six. Okay. All right. Yeah. I th and I think six is reasonable, What? right? One every other month. So go ahead and write down next to CRM, uh, the number six, please. Okay. All right. Good. Now, um, I've got just a couple more for you. Um, the next one I want you to write down is uh, hiring staff. All right, so go ahead and write down hiring staff or hiring an assistant. Now, <clears throat> I know that depending on where you're at in your business and where you're at in your income, it can be kind of tough uh, because, you know, when you're in that zone of, say, 70 to 125,000 a year in income, really tough to commit to that, say, three or $4,000 a month salary. So what a lot of agents do is they hire virtual assistants or they hire part-time assistants, or they work with a company that provides a lot of administrative support. Now, it sounds like your company does some basic support, which is great. Uh, but what I would recommend at some point between now and the end of the year, you really need to look at, at a minimum, hiring a part-time assistant or a virtual assistant if you really truly want to get back to that 150 net. Does that sound fair? Yeah, yeah. Now let me ask you, are you familiar with Sean Conja with our Birmingham office? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. So Sean, Sean joined us as a brand new agent just 18 months ago. And I'll tell you, when I think of all the values that we provide as a company, the number one service he takes advantage of is our agent assist program. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, because obviously you don't know him, but Sean was our rookie of the year last year. And Sean right utilizes on. every single asset of our agent assist program, right? From writing offers to writing remarks to writing listing paperwork to, to getting listings in, right? He takes advantage of everything we offer on the operational side. And guess how many deals he's closed already this year, Matt? Uh, no idea. 23 transactions year to date in his first wow. full year during COVID. Now, if you had additional administrative support, even if you had to pay for it, uh, conservatively, how many deals do you think that that would add to your bottom line if you have all that time back? I mean, again, I'm just being conservative here because I, I know the value uh, at least six homes. Six, right. And, and the reality is you might not be able to be in a position to go out and afford a full-time assistant right now, but we can agree that if I can help you put a plan together to help you go get a part-time one, uh, go get a, 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 a marketing assistant or a VA or somebody that's going to part-time, it may be something that you can implement this year, right? Yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. Good. Now, I promised I'd give you six, so I've got one more. So, by the way, go ahead and write down next to uh, administrative staff or administrative support, write the number six next to that. Cause I think you're right. I think okay. you'd add about six deals a year. If you add an assistant, some people would argue that you could add 10 or 15, but really Matt, I'd rather be concert ultra conservative during this. So the last idea I have written down here, we talked about value to your database and how you could add more value. I wrote down number six. If you would go ahead and write down agent events, please. Okay. Agent events. We're having phenomenal success with this in our company. We've got so many examples uh, of success with Asian events. In fact, one that comes to mind is Amy Duncan. Are you familiar with Amy Duncan? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Amy was one of the first to jump on board and say, hey, so we have an agent, we have an agent events program, Matt. And again, uh, regardless whether you join us or not, this is something you can do on your own. It's just going to cost you a few bucks. And like you said, you're going to have to put a little bit of time into this. Amy was one of the first to jump on board. So we actually created a program to where an agent can plug and play. We put the event together for them. We put the marketing together for them. We split the cost with them even. All they have to do is work with us and help us to get people there. It's their event, their front and center. It's branded to them. And it has been huge for Amy since Amy started doing client events. Her sphere of influence business went from, say, 10 or 12 transactions a year to last year she did 20 deals from her sphere. One year of implementing agent events. She only did four of them. One year, she increased by eight transactions. Could you see value in putting on agent events in your business if you want to add value to your sphere? Yeah, I mean, it's what I said a couple of days ago. I, you know, I've been thinking about doing them for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And if you could find the time and of course have a little bit of budget for it, that would be even better, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's been the big issue is the time. Yep. So conservatively, when you think about the size of your database, we talked about it yesterday, right? You said you had 380 people in your database. Obviously not everybody's going to show up, but if you put a plan together, you had a program that you could plug into that would allow you to have four events per year for that group of 380. Conservatively, how many more deals do you think you would do from your database? Conservatively. I mean, gosh, even if I just got one per event, I mean, that'd one still be four for the year. Yeah, yeah, and it's probably more than that, but I, what I love about you, Matt, is you're very conservative. You're ultra conservative, and that's good. I'd rather err on the side of being conservative than just throw these willy-nilly numbers out there of, oh, yeah, I'd probably do 20 more deals, right? I, it's my job to kind of help you be conservative, so I appreciate that. So go ahead and write down the next agent event for number four. Okay. So we've gone through six different programs that you could implement yourself. Of course, these are things that agents are doing at our company and having success with. If you total those six categories up, go ahead and add those up if you don't mind. I know you're a math teacher, so this should be pretty quick for you. Uh, looks like it's about uh, 34. 34, wow. So go ahead and write down the number 34 and circle it. Okay. And you told me that your average commission, now I know this is gross before expenses, you told me your average commission check is about $7,000. 34 units times $7,000 equals how much more in additional GCI in a year? Uh, off my quick math, that is 
238,000. 238,000 in GCI, which is a big number, but we know that there's expenses, right? You have costs, you know, to your broker, you have costs to an assistant, you have costs to put on events. So let's just pretend in our world, if I was doing this activity with one of our agents, you'd be on an average of a 60% split. And on a 60% split, that would be a total of, I already have the number for you, $142,800 more in your pocket without actually working harder. Yeah, wow. Wow. So you mentioned to me, Matt, um, at our last meeting that you wanted to grow your business from a net of 70 to a net of 150, right? You wanted to double your net. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do you see you do yourself doing that at your current company? Uh, I mean, obviously this is, this is some really interesting strategies, things that I, I really, for the most part, haven't thought of how to implement. Um, so I don't, I don't know, um, but I'm going to figure it out and I'll just, you know, uh, it sounds like I'm going to have to take yeah. on some expenses to get some of these things done, but it looks like they work. Yeah. And whether you join us or not, at some point in time, I'm here to help you, right? I'll have another meeting or two or however many you want to help you implement this stuff. Now, Matt, based on all of these benefits and tools and, and ideas that I gave you, um, you acknowledge that you see yourself having an additional 34 transactions if you implement these. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. see that now. Yep. Yep. And those 34 transactions based on your average price and, and let's just say average profit margin would put about 142,000 in your pocket. Pretty astounding, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's sobering. So you can see then we can do the lay work for you. We can take this off your plate. You can put 142 grand in your pocket it's almost like you can't afford not to join us, right, Matt? I mean, it's actually costing you money to not be here. Yeah, I guess when you, I guess when you put it that way, you're probably right. right. So I think you can agree from what you've seen, not only will you actually net more money and grow your business, but you're going to have a better quality of life. And isn't that what this is all about? Yeah, it's one of the biggest things I want is more time with friends and family. Good. Now, Matt, we have a new group of associates joining us from various companies around the market. Uh, starting on the 18th of this month. I know it's a little quick. Um, would you like to be considered as part of that group, Matt? I mean, I didn't, I didn't come here to think about that. I mean, there's just more information I need to know. Like, I mean, like, what are your, what are your splits? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great question. And, and I'm happy to answer that. So thank you for asking. Uh, and ultimately what I hear you, what I hear you asking is how much am I really going to net, right? You're most interested in what you're going to net, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Now, yep. I did some math based on what you shared with me, and you mentioned to me that your gross commission earned was somewhere around 140000 Is that right? Yeah. And your taxable income was somewhere around 70000 Is that right? That's right, yeah. So essentially, you were on a 50-50 split with your business. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. It cost you 70000 to generate one forty, and you got seventy left over, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah, you're being taxed on 70000 So what I can tell you, Matt, is our splits range anywhere from 40% to as high as 70%. And our average agent is on about a 60% split in their business. So in that scenario alone, right, you're on a 50-50 with your business, you would increase your split by 10% without even doing any of this stuff. Does that make sense? I mean, it makes sense, but right now my current company, I mean, I'm, I'm getting way higher than, than a 40% or even a 60%. Yeah. Yeah. No. So what I hear you, what I hear you saying is you're looking at um, split more so than net, which I think is important because of course split comes first and then net comes after. Right. So I can, I, you know, I talk with agents all the time that are 80%, 90% or even a hundred percent. I had an agent I talked to yesterday. Yeah. But when do I get to go to a hundred percent? And the reality is, Business people, smart business people like yourself, Matt, take a look at what your commissions are and what your taxable income is, and you figure out what your average split there is. And what I mean by that is when an agent is with our team and they're on an average of, say, a 60% split, when they do their taxable income, it still works out to it. That's all theirs, right? We cover a lot of their expenses. At the most, agents on our team have maybe 10% 
of their income go towards expenses. So you can see you're essentially, it's, that's essentially a wash, isn't it? Yeah, okay, I buy, I buy what you're saying. I buy your yeah. logic. Well, no, and I, I, I want to get that out there because I know a lot of people are so focused on, yeah, but what's your cap? Yeah, but what's your cap? <laughs> uh, you should be asking, yeah, what am I going to net, right? A smart business person says, all right, I netted 100000 last year. I want to net one fifty. How are you going to help me do that? Right. If I told you that I was going to put you on a 10% split, but it guaranteed you 150,000 in income, would you make the move? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Right. That you makes can't sense. argue with that. Right. So um, that, so that's why it's important that you're not only looking at the split, but you're also looking at the net. And quite honestly, the other net that we're not even talking about is the net of how much time you get back. I can't tell you how many agents have gone off and done their own thing. And, and I hear from them constantly, oh my gosh, I was working 35, 40, 45 hours a week with Jeff. I thought I was working my tail off until I was forced to do it on my own. Now I'm putting in 65, 70 hours. What is your time worth? So now you look at you're working twice as much for the same amount. Your actual dollar per hour, even at a higher split, Matt, went down. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. We see that all too often in this business. What other questions do you have for me? Um, uh, how are, how are leads assigned? Yeah, that's a great question because everyone wants to know leads. If I'm joining a team, I want to make sure I'm getting leads. And I'll tell you that most people that join our team, Matt, until, until the, 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 the third or fourth interview, they're not even asking about leads because they're normally joining our team for the training, the coaching, the accountability, the CRMs, the administrative support, the marketing, everything else we kind of talked about. Uh, but definitely our agents get leads. In fact, our average agent closed 12 transactions last year just from our leads, right? So if you're coming to us already doing 20, 25, you add these systems plus the leads we provide. Now you're adding, right? Now you're close to 40, 50 transactions. So how we assign leads, Matt, it's very simple. We follow a very transparent policy because, you know, I'm sure you've heard with a lot of these teams. Well, he's been with the company three years, so he gets all the deals. Oh, that's his brother, so he gets taken care of, or he only works that area. Here's how we assign leads. Ready, Matt? Yeah. We assign leads based on how much business you bring to the table yourself. The more business you bring in, the more opportunities you get, period. It's black and white. And not only is it black and white, but we have displays in our offices, Matt, that show how much self-generated business each associate is bringing in. So that way, our administrative team knows we got to reward them. We got to take care of them. They're bringing business to the table. They're bringing business to the table. So the more business that we can train you to bring in, which that's why you're really considering joining us, Matt, because you want us to train you to get to the next level. The more business you bring in, the more business you'll be rewarded with. Fair enough? Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, we reward our top producers. And I think that's the best way to create an awesome culture where everyone's transparent and knows who's getting what. Any other questions, Matt? No, that's all I can think of right now. Yeah. So I know that, you know, we're, we're just a week away from the 18th. And I know that this isn't something that you were um, planning on considering doing, but everything that we've talked about says it probably makes a lot of sense for you to consider joining us. So can I count you in for that group on the 18th? Yeah, this feels like something I need to do. Perfect. Well, the good news is, is that you still have time to pick out and pick out a desk, pick out an office. So um, why don't we, uh, you know, schedule a time after this Zoom. I'll meet you at the office. We'll get your desk set up and get everything ready to go. Fair enough? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Looking forward to taking you to the next level, Matt. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, jumping out of the role play. So what I want to do here for a little bit uh, is, is just have a little, we've got maybe 10 minutes left. Uh, sorry, I've got the sun coming through that happens every week, it seems. Um, just a little discussion first between you and I, Matt, as to how that felt, what some of your observations were, um, and, and some of your takeaways from, from that, that particular experience there. Yeah, so um, as, as the recruit, um, it, it's exhilarating to go through the process of thinking the number of transactions that I could add. And one of the things that works so well in this process is it allows the recruit to come up with the number of extra sales they're going to get from each of those components. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, and you did a great job of this, Jeff, you pushed them to be conservative, but even at conservative numbers, I still came up with 34 extra homes. 
I mean, imagine for the average agent being able to come up with 34 extra homes. They're, they're, if they're driven at any level, they're, their head's going to explode at that, that possibility. Yep. Yep. Love that. Uh, and I'm going to get to some of these questions in the chat. So while you're kind of thinking about what just took place, so um, I'll let you chime in in just a second if you've got some more, Matt. Uh, go ahead. Uh, the last thing that, that's really important in this process that you did really well is you give social proof. So you didn't just talk about, you know, uh, some sort of potential benefit. You actually tied it back to somebody who had implemented that benefit and what it had done for their business. Yeah. So what that signals to the recruit is Jeff's not just selling me on a bunch of hot air. People have actually done this and succeeded. Yep. And, and what I love, and thank you for bringing that up, and, and especially for our team leaders that are on, one of the biggest mistakes, Matt, and I know you've got experience with this with the people that you work with in your programs, one of the biggest mistakes that team leaders make is during interview number one, all right? Let's say I know in my head uh, we've got a dynamic showing agent model, all right? Or, or even for those, you know, or I've got a dynamic CRM. We got the best, you know, KW touts their, their command. We got the best CRM on the planet. The biggest mistake team leaders make in appointment number one is they throw up all over the recruit about their stuff when it comes to their mind, right? So you're telling me, man, if I could just figure out a CRM or this CRM stuff's expensive and here I'm, I'm biting my tongue. Oh, I want to talk all about our CRM. I want to talk about how it's free. I want to talk about how it's amazing. You have to bite your tongue during appointment number one knowing full well that you're going to get to talk all you want during appointment number two, but hold on during appointment number two, you can't just spew out everything about it, everything about it, everything about it. You have to go back to now, Matt, do you see value in that? Now, Matt, conservatively, how many more deals do you think you could do if you took advantage of that? Right? What happens is, especially during appointment number two, the team leader or the lead agent gets so excited about everything they have and they forgot to close. They forgot to get Matt to buy in. They forgot to get Matt to write down the number. And then next thing you know, it's just a bunch of confusion. It's just a bunch of ideas and it was a great meeting. And wow, you're energetic and you're enthusiastic. And if I ever leave my company, you would be the first place I go. No, it has to be a plan. Matt has to walk out of there with a plan. He has to be following along and buying into this plan or it's not going to work. Matt, do you have anything to yeah, add Jeff, that? I know you've had a lot of experience uh, yeah. with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll add to this. Um, I, you know, one of the issues, and I kind of alluded to it a few minutes ago after, after the appointment one, is we need to let pain and fear do the heavy lifting. And the problem is, if we have a conversation in appointment number one, and we're solving the problems as they come, then what happens is emotionally, we're taking people like this, but too fast. We actually want people to come in on a high, right? They're yeah. probably happy where they're at for the most point. And that meaning is meant to bring them down into this pace of, of this place of pain and fear, where they walk out of that meeting saying, I'm failing. I don't know how to fix it. And if we solve it too quickly, then that pain doesn't do the heavy, the heavy lifting. Yeah. So it's that second meeting where using the social proof and using the validation, having them come up with the answers, that's when we bring them up for the high. And then of course that, that sets up an effective close. Absolutely. And I can't stress enough. So I'm going to repeat myself. The two step process has to be followed exactly as it was presented here in order for it to be effective. Otherwise, selling them this on this idea that you're dynamic, that you're powerful, that you've got great stuff, that you've got a great value proposition. That's the same thing everyone else is doing. The only way you can get their buy in is asking strategic questions that are placed in a specific order with the response and appointment number two. And the script is designed to help you with that. Awesome. So let me get to some of these questions and we'll wrap up here. Question from Nicholas. So then how do you effectively recruit when you're a very small team with only a few agents, uh, not the Rainmaker, doing 20 to 30 a year to get to the point that you have agents doing more? Great question. So remember, I had to use this script when we were growing JGA. When JGA started, there was two or three of us. So what I did was twofold. Number one, I used one or two examples of agents on our team that were having early on success. And then I also used one or two examples of agents that I had known in the business. Now, remember, I was a manager and a trainer prior, right? So I was using agents at my previous company. You're familiar with so-and-so. I worked with them for three years on A, B, and C. So 
if, if you have some previous leadership experience or some previous, if you have a role play partner even, are you familiar with Carlos down in Florida? I role played with him for the last three years and his business has gone from here to here. You got to think a little outside the box when you have a smaller group because you're right. If you notice, I had six benefits. I also had six testimonials to match those benefits. Ten years ago, I didn't have six benefits. I had two or three, and I had two or three testimonials to match them. So great question, Nicholas. Question from Virginia. I have an appointment today. We have generated some level of a relationship, and I know some of the answers to these questions. Would you audibly make it a two-step conversation script, or could I go directly into script two based on the information I already have? Nope. Start from scratch. Two-step it. You have to two-step two it. It shows them that you're taking it seriously. It shows them that you're putting a plan together. As Matt said, the script is designed to get them from their high and their confidence of their company and their broker to like questioning things a little bit. Every single question on the appointment number one script is warming them up for appointment number two. Thank you for the question, Virginia. Matt, anything else? Any other observations or anything come to mind for you? Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, I think it's important to understand that recruiting, like anything, is a skill that has to be developed. No one's going to walk away from this session an expert in recruiting. And so now it's taking this framework that, that, that we're providing and then being able to, to then practice and implement and learn the nuances yep. um, and kind of the, 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 the best practices of it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, you've been a great agent. Thank you for joining my company. We'll see you on the 18th, Matt. <laughs> All right, let's, we got some giveaways. So for those of you that have been taking notes, we very much appreciate you doing that. We very much appreciate you telling everyone you know about Glover U and ReLead. You know, I hope you think, I, I hope you believe you're, that we're making a difference for you because we want to make a difference in the industry. This week's winner of utilizing the hashtag Glover U, hashtag ReLead is, put it up on the screen. All right, congratulations to Jason Rivers at EXP Realty. You are getting the Live Unreal Tea. That bad boy is comfortable, great for whatever you want to do this summer. Uh, congratulations. Recruiting solves every problem in a real estate company. Isn't that the truth? Hopefully you've figured that out by now that we've taken you through pretty much everything you need to know about recruiting. But there's a lot more that we could dig into, and we do so in a program that we have called business mastery and uh matt that's starting soon isn't it yeah we're gonna start right at the beginning of june all right so if you want to duplicate what just took place if you want to be able to use the phone scripts the appointment setting script get them in your chair or get them to a starbucks and you want to be able to present handle objections close for them to join your company you want to be able to do that that's something you cover in that program is that right matt yeah, absolutely. In fact, it kind of alluded to before, what we're going to also teach is like, what are the follow-up questions that you ask to create those pain points, to create that fear? And so this script is a really great skeleton, and yet we can do even more heavy lifting by knowing exactly when to insert that, that pain, so to speak, that's going to get them to, to, to make a move. Absolutely. And if you want more information on that program, you can visit GloverU.com forward slash business mastery. GloverU.com forward slash business mastery, or you can email us at info at GloverU.com. We got Matt Sutter teaching that program because guess who was, was very integral in teaching me how to recruit? Matt Sutter. So you want to learn to recruit at that level, join us for business mastery. That starts the first week of June. Other than that, we're a little over on time. Join us next week. We got a special session. We're covering the cost of unemployment, all right, in a real estate business. The cost of unemployment in an agent's real estate business. I'm going to have another special guest on. Sorry, Matt, you're getting booted next week. We're going to have another special guest on, uh, um, a, a mom with kids and chaos and things going on. And, and she's going to join us for that discussion, the cost of unemployment, and also the four-hour workday relead every Wednesday, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make it a great week. See you guys.